Okay, so welcome to Springfield Then and Now. Um, if any of you get the uh, Springfield News Sun or you uh, follow us on Facebook, you'll, you'll have seen these pictures before. Um, for the past, uh, I think it's been five years now, uh, we've been sending a weekly picture to the paper and uh, the photographer, usually Bill Lackey, um, mostly, most of the time it's Bill Lackey, will go find the, the spot to take the now picture. Uh, he said it's become kind of a challenge to him because for him to try and figure out what, what it's going to be. Uh, so uh, sometimes I give, him, I give him enough direction, you know, more specific um, in the little, in the notes so he can find it. Um, but sometimes I, I just let him see if he can figure out where it's at to take the picture. And sometimes I'm surprised when I see the now picture uh, run on Thursday um, that maybe it wasn't exactly where I had thought it was and, and they figured it out or it's um, not what I pictured in my head. So, uh, so I've, we have about 250 of these that we've done so far. So I've just picked a selection of just a handful of them to, sh to start with today. Uh, and this, uh, this session is being recorded. And we have, uh, everybody came in on mute and with their video off, uh, but you're welcome to turn it on right now. I have, have um, minimized on the screen uh, the rest of the people, but you're welcome to, to unmute yourself so you can talk as, as we go through if you want to share memories or um, some of these things, I'll be letting you guess where it is or what it is that we're looking at. Um, and um, we can share more information about the pictures as we go. Um, there's a chat function. Uh, down at the bottom of your screen if you'd like to use that. Um, Casey, if you could pay attention and see if anything pops up there, a question or anything that people don't get to say. Um, and I'll afterwards, be, I'll if, be in if and you out a little bit, but yeah, I'll try to, at the very least, we can check it at the end. And, and then uh, also, if there was a comment or something that you didn't get to share or you think of later, you can always post it on the Facebook event page or send it to uh, ClarkCountyHistory at gmail.com or uh, find another way to get a hold of us if you want to share a memory. People have been doing that after the, uh, these uh, programs, and I really appreciate getting the extra information and getting things that people thought of later, so that's, that's been really helpful. And those are always things that help us make sharing the history easier when we have more information, because you guys are the ones that have it. And I always like to preface everything with the fact that I am not a time traveler. Uh, all of these pictures are before my time, and I'm not even from around here. So I get most of my information from uh, our volunteers, our archives, and city directories. Uh, so I don't have any memories of these things myself, so that's why you guys are here to share your memories. So we'll start with, uh-oh, battery died. There we go. This, we'll start with a wonderful video that you guys may have seen on, on our Facebook. Um, that, uh, that a student from Clark State made this last, uh, well, it was supposed to be this last semester um, when everything kind of fell apart. So we didn't really get to see him in person, but he continued working on his own with images that I had sent him to do this um, wonderful then and now video. Except, can I get it to play? There we go. They go too fast. <laughs> oh, jump you ahead. Okay, so um, 
Some of those pictures, uh, one of our uh, board members, Stephen Mertens, who, who does projects like that with the, the then and now fate, I don't know if he's on this call, um, but he, he, some of those images came from him as well. Um, I apologize that there wasn't sound on that video, the same sound that I can't, that I only hear in my ears, uh, doesn't come through on the video. Um, we'll have to figure out in the future how to get that to come, to come through separately on the speakers because it doesn't appear to play um, the audio from outside videos. But I wanted to start with uh, one of the hardest things with the uh, figuring out the then and now pictures to send is that I don't want them to all be depressing. <laughs> That's kind of a hard thing to do sometimes. Uh, that you don't want you don't want to include things that all things that are not there anymore or things that that show a view that that it, people don't necessarily um, isn't as great as grand as the original view. Um, so I wanted to start with a one that we're very proud of to be to be still in this wonderful building. We're 130 years old, and this is a picture from the 1889 Springfield Illustrated uh, that shows uh, the brand new city building that was still in construction. You can see they're still working on the the windows and, and things down here, and there's there's workers. Uh, it was de dedicated on July 4th, 1889, and. Uh, it didn't officially open um, with the opening dedication until uh, around Valentine's Day, 1890. So we are we are proud to still be here in this building uh, and to be the, the caretakers of it. And though we're we're not uh, we're not in here full time right now, um, and we, <laughs> we 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 had some some things uh, that happened with our building last year that were part of us being an old building. But we're happy to still be able to take care of it in, in Springfield's history. So. Uh, I love this picture here. And before I start any of the other pictures, I wanted to let you know that I uh, took these directly from screenshots from the newspaper. So while I have the full resolution picture in our collections, I was putting this together at home. Uh, so it was a little bit easier to pull these ones. Uh, so we have the clear image if anyone would like to see those. That's a request that I get a lot after pictures run in the paper. People will email and say, hey, I saw that picture. Uh, my great grandfather owned that business, or my family was part of that, and they'll, they'll ask for the for the images. So, if you see any images ever in those pictures um, in the paper or anything that you're interested in, I'm happy to share those, and I'm happy to share the the higher resolution ones. So, does anyone know what this picture is, or where it's at? Washington and Limestone. Um. Maybe. Over over a block. At the Meyer okay. Both each. Where the Francis where the Francis Hotel was. No, this is this is Fountain and High. Fountain and High. And oh. this was the yeah. building that was there before the RQ building. Uh, this was the first picture oh. that I that I sent to the paper back when we started doing this. Uh, we had been doing the looking back feature in the paper has been going on for decades since uh, we found them back in the in the in the 1920s people were doing they were doing a looking back feature in the, in the newspaper um, but the then and now one was one that they asked uh, about five years ago they said you know could you start sending us pictures of landmarks and we'll take the now picture so this was the very first one I sent them uh, back in 2015 and I had sent it right after uh, this was when United Senior Services was still in the Myers Market building and they had just bought the parking lot which you'll see in the next slide. They had just bought this land in the parking lot um, from Jim Lagos as uh, to use as parking for United Senior Services at the time. Uh, so this was the, the now picture. It still looks the same now. It's still a parking lot over there. Uh, and uh, that the previous picture was from 1915 and it was taken down around uh, sometime between 1915 and 16 and then the RQ building opened in 17. And then that was taken down in uh, 2012. So, um, and the the connection here that built the the lot was owned by uh, by Jim Lagos. Uh, this is the Lagos uh, Chris Lagos ice cream parlor, which was part of his family. His uh, Chris and his brother Tom operated uh, were one of the first Greek families there, and they operated that. Um, ice cream parlor. Tom returned to Greece and then his son Harry came to Springfield and Harry is um, Jim Lagos's uh, father. So there was a 
connect, interesting connection with that corner for decades um, with the Lagos family. Okay, the next one here is, this is a very unique view of the big four that you don't normally see. Normally you see it, um, uh, the big grand building um, from further back. Uh, but this was a really unique view looking down <coughs> Spring Street, uh, where, where Spring Street <laughs> is now. Uh, so we've got, I think, uh, this is the Hotel Roger over here on the right. Yes. I believe. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that is on the left, the restaurant. Do you remember, do you remember Bob? No, I don't. But this, is, this picture is from 1939, so you weren't very old when this picture was taken, Bob. <laughs> Isn't uh, the street where we would drive up and drop off passengers? I believe so. So this is, I think, the back side of it. No, that's where you go in to get your train. This is yeah. the this is the front. Times. Yeah. Street, so the, yeah. where this where Spring was didn't okay. Here's so this, this, is, this is where Ohio they did the the, the the now um, we determined was he basically stood in the middle of um, on the edge of the street there to get the picture to show that, Ohio, um, Ohio now, now spring place. street goes, goes right through that. Um, so the original, the, the big four depot was built in 1911. Um, and event it, at its peak, it ha could accommodate 120,000 passengers a day. Uh, it was torn down in 1969 for, for the spring street overpass. And then I've got, I've got a picture later of the construction of the overpass. <laughs> this one, well, this one's kind of self-explanatory, but it doesn't look anything like that today. Although we still have a fountain. Uh, that's the original fountain that was dedicated in 1890, uh, a, a gift from O.S. Kelly. And I've heard, I've heard varying stories on what exactly happened to that fountain. Uh, we know that it was turned off in the 20s, and I think the 20s, and they... Um, People complained about the spray from the fountain and the people messing around in the fountain and um, loitering around it. So uh, another thing I'd heard was that it got shut off or that the water didn't get shut off over the winter and the pipes had broken and the cost to repair it was, was too great. Um, I think there was a lot of things that um, went against it and they eventually took it down. I, I'd heard that it was not the intention to, to have it down forever, um, but then I've heard varying things about what happened to it over time. I heard Pete's pieces ended up in Snyder Park. I don't know if anybody's heard other stories about it. Um, I've heard um, at least one person mention scrap drives and wondering if it had gotten sucked into a scrap drive. Do Are we sure about the, um, the 1920 date for it being shut off? Um, I, well, I don't have that one in front of me now, but I know that I, I'd written a caption about it later. Um, that I'd done some research that I found the article. Well, I, I found the article where it was damaged by by um, over the winter. I don't. And I found something about. So I'd have to go back and check the date on that to be sure. Um, but this one is from um, mid 1890s, and you can see they've got okay. these the great these great benches that go around the trees, and that's the building uh, back there that. Uh, oh, okay. So this was the building that would have been in that first slide. The lower, it's lower down here. The um, the Legos that had the laundry and, and Legos ice cream in it. And then beyond here is the um, IWF Union Hall building, I believe. And then we've got our arcade over here. So the now, it's our tinier fountain. This was taken at Christmas time, and the tree was up. Uh, so this, and you can, yeah, this was a couple of years ago. Um, I forgot to look today if the fountain's on out there. I, I think your thing's just out of focus. Slightly. Oh, I said that the, these are the original pictures from, uh, taken from the paper. Um, so they were, they were screenshotted and I've just, to make them the same size on the slides, they are, they're, they're grainier than they would be. Okay. Um, they were clear in the original newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, but my access, I don't have access to the ones that the paper took. And uh, yeah, and I was doing, putting this together from home. So it was a little, these are, these are a little bit lower quality than, um, yep. than they normally would be. <laughs> oh, wow. 1939. Not quite. 
that is what we assumed. Oh, that was the <laughs> that region. Had to be, was, was, yeah. Um, when, so this is the region. And uh, this is one, uh, a lot of these pictures, as Barbara knows, when she does the scans, she'll, she'll try and do more research on um, putting an exact location to things and maybe trying to find more about the date um, based on what's going on in the picture. So this one, we, we started with, okay, it's got to be at least 1939. So we started there. And um, I looked up information about how long the run of Gone with the Wind was. And... Uh, so this was this was around the around that opening, but um, so we so we we went through the paper every week until we figured out when it was coming, um, and it it was here for um, a full week I believe in 1940 February 23rd was when it opened, and they spent the entire month running up to that uh, running um, daily advertisements to build suspense for the movie, which was not something that I noticed that, that it happened with with many uh, features in town. Uh, so they uh, were the ones that secured the showing. I think that there, uh, the other theaters in town would have wanted to show it, but I think Regent had it exclusively. Um, and the prices were, it was a dollar, which was double the normal price at the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the showings for all of the shows sold out weeks before the premiere um, going into this. Um, and it said that, so that we got from the paper, they kept it for an extra week to accommodate the thousands who were unable to secure seats to the original run. Uh, and then, so uh, what adjusted for inflation, I, I think this might still be up there with some, one of the most um, successful films in box office history. Uh, and we know the, the Regent uh, is the second theater on this space. It opened in, in 1919. Um, we've got other pictures of the, the, the pictures that we have the, the previous theater uh, are only of when it fell in, uh, when they were, they were remodeling it, there was a collapse there. So uh, we don't have any good pictures of the theater itself, but we've got a lot from when the disaster happened in the theater. <laughs> so this is it uh, today, a couple of years ago, so it might look slightly different today, uh, but it, this, is, this is close to now. Go back to that previous one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you can see the James uh, McAdams building there, mm -hmm. and that's where the Edward Wren started out. Right, that was their their original location was in that right uh, in there right before they moved over to the uh, Bushnell building. And according to Google, Gone with the Wind is the most uh, successful movie uh, in history, adjusted for inflation. Bill, that's made the out. most money ever. So. Okay, our next one here. Does anyone recognize this house? I don't know what that is. It's, it's on East High Street. It looks a little different today. Probably a funeral parlor. It is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's white now. It's, uh, it's a water house. It's, it's Jones Kenny Zeckman at the corner mm -hmm. of, um, what is that, Penn? No. So what's the Z for? Uh, Zeckman. Zeckman. Oh. Uh, so it's Jones Kenny Zeckman now. But originally, um, it was okay. built in 1870 for the family of uh, Edward C. Middleton. And uh, we have uh, the son of E.C. Middleton's story is one of the stories that we tell in the museum. Uh, his son was supposed to be a bugler during the Civil War. And he... Uh, ended up getting called into service and his son wrote to or his father wrote to Abraham Lincoln saying uh, m you know my son is not old enough to fight you need to you need to let him come home and uh, we have the letter from Lincoln on, a, on the back of an envelope saying when you can provide a suitable replacement I will discharge your son uh, <laughs> and his son his son did make it home although he was he was captured before that and and um, spent some time in in a prison camp but he did make it back to Springfield uh, after the Middletons owned the home, it was the home of William Warder. Uh, he was the son of uh, Jeremiah Warder and uh, brother to Benjamin, who uh, Benjamin uh, H. Warder is the, uh, the Warder that uh, gave the Warder Library. And uh, Jeremiah Warder is the one that, well, the, the building on, on Main Street that uh, 
that uh, Dan Hurley he is uh, opening for the Springfield Historical Society that was was um, Jeremiah Warder's building. If I'm correct. Um, that's the corner of Lincoln. And it's high. The, yeah, Lincoln and High. This this yes. is the link Lincoln and High. I couldn't remember the yeah. uh, the street the cross street there. Um, so the owner after uh, William Warder was W. H. Glee, which was uh, he was the pre president of the Springfield Breweries, which was down on, on uh, Penn and Section Street uh, behind where uh, Schuler's Bakery is now. And then in 1920 uh, was when it converted to a funeral home. Um, Joseph C. O'Brien um, took it over and his nephews were the Kennys. And then um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the Jones and the Zeckman eventually came in, but I, I, I'm friends with, with someone um, from the Jones family there. She remembers um, when her father uh, was, was um, in the home and, and they lived there. Uh, but you can see that the porch has, a lot has been changed uh, between uh, then and now. Mm -hmm. So this is a view that no one, no one here would have seen. Uh, I'm not sure when these ponds were taken out at Snyder Park, uh, but we know that this uh, image comes from a 1923 uh, Chamber of Commerce publication about um, the different things that are available for people in Springfield and, and reasons to come visit Springfield. Um, it's got a whole section about the parks and it has this here. And it was really interesting because a few years ago when they were working on the Rotary uh, playground uh, that's over in, in uh, New and Snyder Park now uh, over by the spray ground, uh, they had uh, emailed us and said that when they were digging up the old, excavating the old playground that was there, I don't know if you guys remember, there was an old bumpy caterpillar there and um, an old jungle gym uh, that was that was there just until they, they started pulling things out for, for this new one. Uh, but they had dug everything up and they found these circles underneath and they said it looks like it was a water feature but we can't find anything about a water feature over here. And we had pulled out the um, all the postcards we have of Snyder Park that had water features in it and we compared the pictures trying to figure out if we were looking at, you know, the water feature that, that was shown here in the picture and none of them matched. Um, and it wasn't until a couple of years later when I, we happened to be going through this publication, I saw this and I said, oh, that's where the circles came from because that's exactly where the circles had been. Uh, so they had these big uh, stone circles underneath that they just built the, old, the playground over. So when they built the new, uh, the current rotary playground, they, they dug all that up. Um, but it was, it was interesting. It was like a, it's a lot of times it's like being a detective here, figuring out these things. So that was, that was a neat mm -hmm. discovery to figure out exactly uh, where this was located. <laughs> Here's one. Hasn't changed much. Hartman. Hartman yeah. Rocker. Mm -hmm. Yes. As you can see from the, the now picture, it's, it's completely the same because they've done so much work to restore and, and keep it up. Um, uh, a lot of the work uh, was done uh, almost 10 years ago. I think that in 2008 was when they, they started doing the major restoration over there. Um, and you can, you can still walk through there. Uh, but it was built, uh, he started, Ben Hartman, who, who uh, built the garden, started it in 1932 um, when he was laid off from his job as a molder during the Great Depression. And um, it was a way to fill his time. And I don't know if you'd seen on our, our um, Facebook page uh, in, I think it believe in the paper a few weeks ago, um, we'd run across in the newspaper another rock garden uh, picture. And it said it was one of many rock gardens in the city, which that was news to me. I didn't realize that there had been uh, multiple rock gardens in the city. Um, this one was over, um, I think on the south end of town, I'll have to, I'll have to look up the, the street. I can't recall now. Or Rose um, Street. Rose. Was, the, Rose. was where that other one? It's called, oh, no, I'm sorry. This one's on Rose Street. I don't know where the other one was. This one is. Yeah, this one's on uh, Russell and McCain. Oh. At, um, over off of, um, was that South Yellow Springs? Um, yeah, Springs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
but yeah, uh, Hart, uh, Ben Hartman died in 1944, and then his family took over maintaining it, and um, they maintained it till 1997. So it fell into some disrepair in the years between, but then in 2008, uh, they, they started restoring it. So it's in beautiful condition now, and um, they get together every year to, to plant flowers there, and um, it's, it's just, I always take family there to walk around when, when I have Who family in town. Who's, who's in charge of it now? Who? Um, I think they have their own separate foundation board. Um, and I think there's usually a, a live in, um, I'm not sure how, if that's still the case now, but there was a, a artist in residence that lives in the home that kind of keeps an eye on things. I'm not sure if that's still how they're doing things, but, um, oh. okay. Can anyone figure out the street we're looking at here? Must be looking west on High Street. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, but there's, well, I say, what building, is there a building there that you recognize, Bob? They would all be outside pretty much anybody's memory at this point, but although, no, I think they are. Is that, is that limestone? Because this street? is not. This is limestone is the cross street here. And then this is looking west on high. Uh, Downhill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In our time, the, the building on the right was a drugstore. The building on the left with a column, that was Walgreens. Yes. Uh, and Woolworths eventually took the place of the hotel. Over on the other side. So right. yeah, this was the book, Walter. Right. I think this was called the Robbins building on this block here. Uh, anybody have is, any idea what the sign um they're on the uh, uh it's not the robbins building i but think well you can see I it looks read. like it might say r e n there so that might be I yeah mean, it but Renz, e was, Renz wasn't in that building though so but well, well we did we did figure out the exact date on this building and i'll have to tell you how how we figured this out so this um trolley here if you zoom in really far on the original there's a little poster here on the corner that says uh, Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West Show, August 28th. Mm. So turns out there's a list of every single time, every single show that Buffalo Bill Cody ever did. And <laughs> you can find it online. So we figured out what shows he had that fell on August 28th. And figured and out that this was August 28th, 1907. And that's why you scan everything at 600 DPI minimum. Yes. <laughs> if you can zoom in. Preferably really, higher. <laughs> really far on that. Uh, the other interesting thing we found from that was that he came to Springfield a number of times. Um, he had at least 20 visits between 1875 and 1914. Um, and then we have a folder in our archives that has ads from some of the later shows in 1910 through 12. Um, and we had one in 12 that said this was his last show in Springfield, but then we found another one that he came again in 1914. Did anybody um, come up with him? I'm not sure about that. I'd have I to look they, closer at those ads. I thought they traveled together. I mean, I thought she was part of um, Well, I have to check and see if she's mentioned specifically, but yeah, I don't know if they, if they mentioned her specifically or if there's another list that indicates, shows that she was definitely included in with him uh, my, but the, dad, yeah, was, my dad remembered uh buffalo bills parade and they marched all the way out west to the end of west high street which was how far all the way to the end all the way down there 1900 block okay <laughs> When would she, does she, when would that have been? Do you have any well, idea? Well, I, I would say my dad was born 1905, and I would say he was 10 or less. So be, you know, 1915 or earlier. Okay. So close to around when, when this was. We've, here's our, here's our now picture. Um, you can see there's, there's no buildings that are the same no. in, in this view. They're all, they're all gone. Here's another street view. I don't know. It's a high street Methodist church. No. Block down. St. Ray's. No. 
No. no. Block block the other direction. Uh, so this is this is this is also looking west, but this is uh, looking down Maine. So our cross street here is Fountain because this is Black's Opera House, um, which is where the um, the Fairbanks slash First National slash Whole <laughs> Plaza is today. Uh, so you can see no. uh, this block oh. here. So this this picture here was before any of the other any of the buildings replaced it. Uh, so this is. 1870s we know from um, just from from placing because we know that this building popped up later um, not too long after so it, it has to, it had to have been um, before just before that was built so what uh, but it shows that? the big church with the spire is uh, First Presbyterian Church uh, which later combined hey, Italy, if you could hear me yeah. I cannot hear you I speak by uh, I cannot get any sound from you, but I can see what's going on, finally getting into this thing. Well, I'm sorry, if, if, uh, if you can't hear it, we're recording this. So I just hope that you can record this and yeah. then play it back for me, okay? It's, record, it's recorded, so we'll make sure we email it. Um, so yeah, this is an 1870s view looking down, um, down West High, and then the 1848 Presbyterian Church um, was there for, uh, well, it was gone when they, when, um, uh, Covenant Presbyterian opens because that was the one that had combined um, to, be, to become that church. I don't remember. And church Black's, Black's Opera House uh, yeah. had opened in the 1860s, and then that's what burned um, in um, the early uh, 20th century, and there was a, a fire on that corner. What's this on the left with all the um, I'm not sure what those buildings are on the left exactly. I don't. We don't have a good view straight on from those. It must have been taken from the balcony. It looks like that this is the balcony of whatever building this was. So that. I'd have to. I'd have to look up at the um, uh, in the directories um, under the buildings listings to see if we can figure out what would have been directly across from from these buildings here. But we know this here was the Bancroft family uh, fur furriers. Um, which is the same Bancroft family that later had the, the Bancroft Hotel over on, on High Street. Um, but Louis Bancroft that started that business was one of the earliest settlers in the, in the area. There's that, very, very different. Oh, except now, oh, no, this is just before, if, if this build, build, picture was taken back just a little bit further, you'd see that new Rose uh, City mural that, that is on the wall back there, right before, right before the Bushnell building. Okay, now we have the same street looking the other direction um, about 30, 30 years later. No, east. So yeah, this is, this is looking east. This is around 1900. And I love this one because everybody looks so ghostly here with the exposure on this picture. Um, <laughs> You didn't go downtown unless you had a dress on. If you didn't. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, I don't think the pr women probably went anywhere without a dress on in 1900. But <laughs> that was but, still true in the 1960s. Come yeah. on, All right? Even uh, but here you can see the the Bushnell Building was, which was built in uh, 1894. Uh, but everything else on this block is is no longer there. But you can see the trolley lines there. I like this is a great one to show the lines. And we've got Troops Drug Drug, drug Store on the corner, uh, where the George Rogers Clark statue stands now. So you can see uh, this picture cut off George here, but he would be over here a little bit further. And then I think actually is this building the same too? Yeah, and the other in a this yeah this building in the um the bank building on the corner. The second right building the is a freed building. Yeah. Okay. The one at the white front. The white is called. Okay. Is the Freed the, building? It was a Freed was a jeweler. And then, whoops, I'm going it's back. It's this one. This is still before. Okay, so this is early 1900. So the Shawnee was built, uh, opened in 1917 back there. So that doesn't show up oh. either. Okay. This is the this is the courthouse. Yeah. Uh, so the block where the current courthouse stands, there have been a total of three courthouses on that same spot. So this was the second courthouse um, at the corner of Limestone and Columbia. Um, the first was just a two-story that opened in 1821, and uh, the story with that is 
that I've, I've talked to several people about is the bell that was in that tower is net, was later purchased by the Anna local school district and is still in Anna, Ohio, despite several people. Not, I, I don't think the historical society has tried to get it, but I've talked to some people that say we were trying to get that bell back in Clark County, but it's still, it's still in Anna. Um, but this is the second courthouse here, and uh, it was opened in 1881, and then there was a fire in uh, March 1918 that uh, gutted it, basically. They used the same basic structure to create uh, the current courthouse, which opened in 1924. I mean, this one looks really awesome. Uh, sad that it, that it burned, but you can see that it's even the, that one had more of a, a elevation from the street as well. Um, this one's does not. Um, still a pretty grand building, and they've done a lot of work on it um, with renovations in the last couple of years. I think there's, I think they might currently be working on that now. Uh, I know they're working on the AB Grand Building across the street. Uh, this is our. This is our oh wow! <laughs> All right. Nineteen fifty. Yep, this is the 1950 yeah. blizzard on the same street <laughs> mm -mm. on limestone, uh, which um, on limestone a lot, there's still a lot there. The, the YMCA is gone, um, but we got the post office is still there and the like courthouse. This was in 1950. <clears throat> yes. And then uh, over here, uh, this is where juvenile court is. So that was the only, I, I believe that was the the East County building was on that side. Um, or may, it might have been gone at that point. It's hard. You can't, I don't know. Hey, Danley, remembers what was I was on six the right years old side. at that time. And that snow was just over my head. I remember <laughs> that very well. Yeah, that was a, that was a big, a big storm. This is one of my, one of my favorite pictures of it that shows all the, all the cars uh, stranded. Some of the, yeah, some of the cars look like they were snowed over like while they were driving. <laughs> they, they weren't parked along the side of the road like it was that fast <laughs> yeah the, the 1950 blizzard was on uh november 28th so it was just after thanksgiving that year mm -hmm. uh and uh one of my favorite stories from the storm is that that's the snowball year so that was the the ohio state michigan game was played in the snow uh and uh howdy weber um was the one who took the picture here um and, and, and he's got, he, he had, um, this was a picture we have in our, our Heartland book uh, for the museum and he had shared some, some stories from taking pictures of that storm. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of his pic pictures in our archives from that storm, but we do have, we do have quite a few pictures just from, from other people that had, um, have collected over the years. What building did he have been taking that from? Would he have been in the hotel? Um, I don't get the angle. Well, it had to have been from from higher up. I, I guess it might have been from the Shawnee. He could have gotten, because I, I think Bill must have had to go up in the Shawnee to get this picture for the now. And you can see, yeah, there's still, well, this building's different and the, the YMCA is gone, but our, the, the main buildings on that block are, are still there in that one. Um, Wasn't Olin Mills on the corner or where those bushes are or, or was it farther down? Yeah, mm -hmm. farther down on the right. Further down, uh, so Pat, further down on the north side. Yeah, on the north side of of which street? Limestone. Oh, okay. No, Columbia. 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 Northeast corner. Oh, so so well, this is Columbia though. Well, I'll go back to the new one. Olin Olin Mills is on the north. Because, right there. Where those bushes are on the right. Oh, so next to the post office. Farther. Down a little bit farther to the right, I think. Farther over. That's right. I think like old. maybe the second building down the uh, to the right. The one they just there was something on that corner, wasn't there? Yeah, Olin, I, I think Olin Mills was where the new parking garage is. Right. That's where Olin Mills was. Yeah. Over, so <laughs> over a block on Fountain? Yeah, yeah. it's over a block oh, and okay. right on the, on the southwest that's, that's no. that's south corner. And then there's that a lot in La Croix d'Or uh, beauty salon, which was a fancy yeah. beauty salon back in the early 60s. Right. That corner right there on the, where the pine trees are, mm -hmm. the original DeMint property 
that was given to the city in 18 one or two really right. on that, that corner was the, there that was the yes. square right wasn't it okay. meant to be a public right. square right okay because yeah. yeah the maps that we have of the original plot has the the, the center of downtown over uh several further blocks. north, further north. Uh, yeah yeah my two there's a lot were stuck here in that sun that storm they were both wittenberg students and they couldn't go anywhere because of a storm uh. the Thanksgiving weekend I, I, I have I have a I have a number here for how many tons of snow it was one million six hundred and sixty three thousand eight hundred and seventy two tons of snow that, that you measured that and how I don't know but I have <laughs> I have the number it I mean I believe somewhere. it but <laughs> do you know what they did with most of it what they opened the manhole at uh, high and limestone okay and they took bulldozers and shoved the snow down, the manhole. down the manhole didn't that cause flooding issues oh, yeah later i feel like when it melted well think all that sight salt that killed the fish oh my goodness <laughs> oh man yeah that was a lot of not good stuff going into the uh, <laughs> okay we've got here Anybody know this it's the old high school, yeah. This was uh, Central High School. Central High School, yeah. Where where was it at, Bob? The corner of uh, West High and hmm. across from Crowbar. Yeah, it's across from Crowbar. Yeah, this is the. It's a. It's a lot now. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and I don't have. <laughs> I, I, I need to find some new pictures of the other side of the block of, of Kroll Collier to send to the paper so we can get the empty lot now because I'd sent them over the last few years as they were tearing the building down. But now that it's completely down, I need to send another picture of that block um, so that we can get a now showing the, the change. Because all the when I was pulling pictures for this uh, presentation, all of the ones I could find of Kroll Collier, the now had those buildings standing, obviously, because they hadn't started tearing down the the side that faces High Street yet. When we went past there today at about oh, this afternoon, they're getting ready to take the columns down. Okay, they still haven't taken those down? Yeah. There was, five, there. there was five people standing there and they were all looking at the columns. Uh, well, I, I, <laughs> trying, to, I saw, trying to figure out how to take it apart, I imagine. I saw, I saw, <laughs> that's all we had going on. Yeah, oh, they're working on that. Traffic. <laughs> yeah, that's been, well, that's saw, been a, a five year project now to, to get that building. I, uh, I, I saw Sue Childs out there um, filming, uh, recording uh, the process. So we'll, we'll right. figure out how they took it apart at some point. <laughs> Sue, Sue has given us hundreds of thousands of pictures so far that she's taken documenting everything coming down. I know that people all throughout town are documenting it too, and I encourage everybody to keep doing that. I don't have to scan all those. Uh, yeah, Barbara, that'll be your project. No, she's giving them to us. She's giving them to us digitally, so they're already digital. Oh, <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to worry about that. But if you want um, to, we'll print them out so you can scan them. <laughs> That's, <laughs> to go back to the school. Don father uh, used to have a collection. Whose father? Don Laburn's father used to have a tremendous collection we, of photos. We have it. That's where a lot. some of these pictures come from. Okay. Um, we Yeah, it's about... It's an amazing collection. It's about 25 boxes of slides. And, and you know, he always would put his stamp on the back of the pictures um, that, that he had. Uh, so we've got hundreds and hundreds of those. And, um, and so, yeah, that's a really wonderful collection. And it's a lot, the, if anyone loves those Images of America, Arcadia Press books, uh, all of the images there come from Harry's collection. Uh, so that's, that's a really wonderful collection. To My go back dad to went to uh, Central School, and his his room must have been what's in the right front corner of this picture. Okay. And he said they watched them build the the uh, smokestack. Oh my gosh! For Cole Cole. Cole. Oh, I remember you telling me that, and I've been trying. I was trying to figure out when the smokestack actually went up. So when did well, your dad? Would your dad have gone to Central? Yes. I, my guess is that was either the seventh or eighth grade. So um, that'd be. 19 teens. 20, yeah. 22 or 23. And see, I was, I was thinking around 1919. 
for no, you're, you're, the you're, smokestack because the power plant i think went in in 1919 so or the power plant that that smokestack is attached to well you know the the school was built in 1876 this picture is from 1889 it comes from the springfield illustrated book um oh and then the the springfield high school um the later one the that's now the dome um was built in 1911 so then this was left and became a um i think it's it became an elementary school for a while um until they until it was eventually torn down and then it had and then it was the parking lot for cole collier for a long time edith ritchie was my dad's teacher some of you might remember she was still teaching in high school when i was there oh. now, that's you know oh, goodness and she he, he said she'd come around and if she caught you watching out the window at a building the stack, she'd crack you across the hands with a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that going on. Uh, I finally got the sound going. I oh, good. I'm glad you can hear now. And we'll, we'll make sure you get the rest of the video. Okay, how about this, this one here? Does anyone know what building that is? It looks like oh, here. No. Oh. This is this is behind the Heritage Center. This was uh, the Burton Hotel original. Well, the Montgomery Hotel was what it was originally called, but it. Um, oh, then uh, the K guy. KK Tool um, yeah. used the uh, the the uh, the bones of the original structure for for their building uh, later. But uh, this picture is from the 1940s when it was the Hotel Burton, uh, but it opened in 1917 as the uh, Hotel Montgomery, and it was run by. Um, uh, John Montgomery, and it was one of the first locally owned um, and run black hotels in, in uh, Springfield. Hmm. And then uh, Edward Burton took it over in the 40s, and they brought a lot of major entertainers um, there, including uh, Duke Ellington performed there, Cab Calloway, Count Basie, uh, Lionel Hampton, and then later um, local uh, man Johnny Lytle had uh, performed there. Um, so the, in the 60s, Bob, you mentioned it was um, the Guy Hotel. So that's when it um, changed hands there. And then it closed in the 70s. Um, wasn't, it, wasn't it mainly a, a hotel for the black people? Um, I think, yes, it, it, it was mainly. And then um, when they tore it down, um, I think KK Tool may have been the ones that, that tore down the building and then rebuilt on the site in the 80s, um, mm -hmm. their current site. Um, did they have those teardrop style cars in the 40s? I thought that was in the 50, early 50s. I don't know, Barbara. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not a car expert, but I think we might, we, we may have just to, I, I can't like, remember. I'm not sure how we- looks like a 49 Pontiac. I, I can't remember. We I'd have to look at what collection this one came from, if this one had an actual date on it or if we had assumed a date. Uh, the rest of the cards look like they're from the 30s, but but yeah, I'd have to I'd have to see where we got our source on the date on this picture. Oh, what that said. Okay, the next one. This one was one that we just um, just was in a couple of weeks ago in the paper, uh, and uh, if if you if you have the if you have the original, you can zoom in a lot better. This is when I realized that this building here was Burger King under the tree here King, yeah and we've had a lot of people over the years ask us if we have a picture of burger king and i always said we didn't have a picture of burger king um barbara i think you scanned this picture with um with something else i can't remember what where you were scanning from um but it was with our overpass um construction photos oh. and you had tagged burger king in the photo because you had seen it there too um, so when I was flipping through, I, I noticed that. So now when someone asks for a picture of Burger King, we know we, we know we have not a great picture, but we at least have one that includes it in it. Um, but that's this was where, a really... That's where the little guy beat the big guy. Yes. Uh, so so uh, he opened it in, in the 1960s, um, Thomas Endicott. Uh, and right. he opened it as Burger King and he trademarked the name, very smart. Uh, so then when, when, the, when the chain called Burger King wanted to come to Springfield, they had to be called the home of the Whopper because he owned the trademark on the name. Um, and eventually they, they did buy it out from him. I, I know that when we shared this on Facebook, his, his, I think his daughter-in-law had commented um, about it. And, um, but 
Uh, this was one that when I came across it, I knew where it was. I mean, I know people had always told me that it was across from Springfield High School, but I had a hard time orienting myself to where the now picture needed to be. But I knew that this was limestone here. Right. So I, 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 they figured, I think they figured it out. So there's limestone. So is this, is this right correct there, though, where it would have been? Because I've had other people say that it's the spot where the Davy Moore statue is now, right but that there. was no, it's in, the, in that green grass. In the grass. On this right side. There, right there at the point. Yeah. Oh, at this side here. Okay. Point right there. I see that hole is probably from the concrete <laughs> foundation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because those buildings across the street are pretty old in themselves. Okay, so yeah, that, yeah, okay, because this is a church. Wait, am I on the right block here? Yeah, this is a church here. Yeah, so we're on the, wa the, the wise down here, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, first, first Presbyterian church. Yeah, okay, so it's this, so they did have the location right, but in my brain, I didn't, I wasn't picturing it correctly. I was picturing the other side of the street. Uh, so this is what, Selma going to the right? Yeah, so this is... Or not Selma. Selma Road. Uh, yeah. this, is, this is limestone. Wait, wait, let me yeah. see. And Selma Road going to the and right. Selma. And then over here, just a little bit further, um, would be... Uh, Spring Street. Spring Street, Street. yeah. And then the high school's behind. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's hard to get oriented sometimes. It, it, that's... That, that's the hardest thing with some of these is trying to, I, I go down to the, um, the models in the museum a lot <laughs> to try and walk around <laughs> and figure out where things are because looking at the directory, sometimes I still can't quite figure it out. And with um, addresses yeah, changed, yeah. like the addresses changed in 1908, that throws me off a lot too because if I'm working on trying to give the paper an address to take the picture from, I have to make sure it's not an address that changed or something like that. I wonder um, why that happened. That happened in my hometown in Indiana, too. I'm not sure if it that has something to, to do with them needing needing more numbers, maybe. I'm not I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to do some, have something to do with that. I don't know. Do some more research on that because I don't I don't think it's an uncommon thing for the for the renumbering. Yeah. Um, this one here, this was another one that was a big um, a big detective. We had <laughs> had to do a lot of detective work on this picture. Um, do you know what street we're on? There's there's a lot of landmarks that are still here on this one. So Fountain. Yeah. So this is Fountain. We still have the State and, Theater and the Fairbanks building and the Bushnell you can see down there. Everything on this side is gone. But do you have a date on that picture? We do. It's about the nineteen twelve flood. No. No, no. A little bit later. It's a different flood. Thirty five. Um, Twenty nine. Twenty nine. So this was one where we have two sets of pictures on our archives. We didn't realize they were two sets. We, have, we had one folder in our archives that said 1929 flood. And we had scanned the pictures and shared them on some of them online of the anniversary of the February 1929 flood. And then somebody said, pointed out in one of the pictures, uh, would they have been swimming in 1929 in the flood water? <laughs> And we said, no, no, they probably wouldn't have. That would have been very cold. <laughs> so I wouldn't have thought we, knew, we, knew they were, we knew the flood was from 1929. So we went through the papers and we used the marquee on the state theater here. If you blow up the marquee, you can read the movie. Um, and then went through the paper and found when that movie was playing at the state. So, we knew, so then we figured out it was, it was June 19th. Um, or, or around June 19th, because the flood was June 19th, 1929. And that's when we realized, okay, there were two floods. And when we found the pictures in the paper from that flood, they were the exact pictures that we had in our archive. Um, how did, how did, did the have, river water get up that high? Um, it was, I said it was a series of downpours. Oh, um, okay. It so, wasn't river water then. It, no, this, the, the sewers weren't able to handle the runoff. Okay. So here you see people are trying to replace some of the bricks and they had to do some repair on, on fountain there. Um, and then there was a, it took a layer of silt through all of those stores that were, were down there. Um, if you guys remember 1959, <laughs> uh, January 1959 flood, it was uh, so much snow that melted. It was not mm. snow that melted and four and a half inches of rain on top of it. All that water around just, it eliminated the uh, Limestone Street Bridge and a lot of the <laughs> streets around here. And, that, uh, that, that was a, a March flood too, wasn't it? That was about the same time as the... 
that was the same around the same time as the 1913 flood, which had the same issue with the uh, melted snow um, causing uh, the water to rise more. But yeah, it sounds like the June one was more of just a, a downpour situation, kind of like what we had a few weeks ago with the um, that was runoff that um, the sewers couldn't handle um, that we just had a few weeks ago here in, in Springfield um, in the northern part of town in Ridgewood area and in some other areas. So um, history sort of repeating itself, but not downtown, luckily. Um, I remember so. I was I was over here at the east side. It wasn't that much rain over here as it was on the north side, like uh, Jadot was telling us. Well, speaking of uh, Shandon and uh, St. Bernard's, uh, there was a lightning strike during that same storm um, around of that flood um, that hit St. Bernard's at that time um, uh, with that, that same June storm. And uh, we've got pictures of the flooding out at um, International Harvester that uh, damaged all the trucks out and outside on the grounds. This year, I don't remember them saying anything about that over at St. Bernard's. This year. Uh, no, it was the night in 1929. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's that's all we have in the way of pictures. Although um, I did, I had, I have a bonus one. It's the picture that I sent for tomorrow. Um, let me see if I can bring it up really quick. Um, so let me share my screen again. The 1913 flood. If you come into Springfield from the west, you'll see Main Street and Columbia separates, and there's a BP station there. Mm -hmm. Okay, if on the Main Street side of that station, you'll see a mailbox on a post. And my dad said that that was the high water mark in the 1913 flood. Mm. Really? So <laughs> over by the BP there, I'll have to look next, yeah. time, I, next yeah. time I go by there. Um, I know I know that the flood, the 1913, didn't affect Springfield nearly as bad as it did Dayton and other areas, right. but it did it did hit us um, somewhat. But our, our water was down like by the afternoon of the, the bad days that they had there in Dayton. So this is the picture that I sent to the paper for tomorrow. Does anyone know what it is? Oh, it's a schoolhouse. Yeah, yeah not that far. Barbara, this yeah. one was this one was for you. I could not find a picture of Jefferson School, but this is the original Jefferson. I was going to say it might be Jefferson. This is the this is the original one that stood on that site. It burnt in um, 1928, I think, or 29. I don't know. It's whatever the caption says in the paper the tomorrow. I've, I've forgotten it now. But I they, thought they said when I was there in the 50s that it was already 50 years old. <laughs> well, I think they may have rebuilt on the site because what I found, I, I that. It, the new school opened the same year that it burned. So I'm thinking they may have used the bones of the, of the, at least the bone or part of the structure, but you can see it looks very, very different than the later. Remember it had a beautiful school. central staircase with a winding um, banisters on both sides. But I need to do a little more research to find the, the, the build date of this. I didn't have that to give the paper. Um, it it looks, uh, looks to me like they took the top off and, and made and, it put a flat roof on her, yeah. But but yeah, I need to I need to do a little more on that. I don't know if there's more in the archives, but I didn't I didn't have access to the archives. But I ran across this picture and I said, well, at least I know exactly where it is, so that they could go take the now picture. Um, so it faced um, on McCray, didn't it? Yes, yeah. it was at the the corner. It was